Ladies and gentlemen, let's a game into the com video. What about Team Green, also known as NVIDIA? The company have just undergone their own earnings call, and we have a slew of announcements, some pretty darn exciting ones actually, concerning, well, Pascal. What else could it be, right? How would you like one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth? No, I didn't misspeak. I literally mean one terabyte a second of memory bandwidth. If you want more details, we'll be getting into that in just a second with a load of other stuff as well. This is also an article, if you want to go ahead and check it out, where I've got some links and other bits and bobs you'd expect. But let's get into the discussion, shall we? So, NVIDIA's CEO, Jen Sung Huang, hopefully I'm pronouncing that fellow's uh, name right. I always go through the practice and then screw it up. Anyway, we do know that NVIDIA, of course, have been working on Pascal for some time, and the base GPU is known, codenamed as PK100. So, NVIDIA are boasting that Pascal is going to be providing four times, I repeat that one more time, four times the mixed precision performance, two times the performance per watt over the current Maxwell architecture, and will also no longer be using GDDR5. Maybe some models will, but let's just say for the top models at the moment, because that's the ones we know more about. We don't know about the lower end models. And the equivalent of like the, the 960s, we don't know anything about those. We do know the equivalent of like the 980. Um, they will be moving to high bandwidth memory too. So as a little bit of an aside, AMD are going to be using HBM1 for Fiji, and they will be switching to HBM2 for Fiji's successor, also known, of course, as Arctic Islands. Um, we don't know the release schedule at the moment for Pascal, but I will go into that because there were some hints on the release date. Um, and so, utilizing HBM2 will allow NVIDIA to be providing at least three times the bandwidth of current Maxwell parts and 2.7 plus uh, times the amount of VRAM. So what the hell does that mean to you and I? Well, one terabyte a second of memory bandwidth. That simple. Insane. Plus the GPU theoretically can support up to 32 gigabytes of VRAM. I just want you to think of that. 32 gigabytes of VRAM. That's a lot of texture data. That's insanity. Um, and then uh, Jen, has, Jen actually said, and I quote, I cannot wait to tell you about the products we have in the pipeline. There are more engineers at NVIDIA building the future GPUs than just about anywhere in else in the world. We are f singularly focused on visual computing, as you guys know. We found over the years our ability to focus on just one thing, which is visual computing, and able to leverage that one thing across the PC, cloud, mobile, and other uh, addresses, very four markets with the one thing gaming enterprise cloud and automotive we can do this one thing and now we'll be able to enjoy and deliver the capabilities to the market of all three major computing platforms and gain four vertical markets it's quite frankly very exciting and i cannot wait to tell you all about it you're just going to have to wait just a little bit longer there are a few other details we do know this is slightly less exciting uh this is more business orientated they will be sticking primarily with TSMC as their major supplier, despite the fact that there are some rumours they will be shifting some work to Samsung. In fact, not even rumours, it's pretty much confirmed. And also, their manufacturing is going to uh, transition to a 14 or 16 NM process, but we're not quite certain which one. Eventually, however, Obviously, the company will be shifting to, let's say, 10NM and so on and so forth, because that's just how, uh, well, it needs to go. And indeed, Jen Song said that he's not really that obsessed with the process technology. Um, he's not that bothered about it, to be totally honest with you. He's more interested in the best performance, the best cost, and so on, which I think that's kind of cool. I'm not... I think as long as you're getting the best performance and the best, you know, the best you can out of the process, then that's probably more important than to shift without being ready. I think that's pretty much what he's saying. Um, finally, I just want to give you a few thoughts and opinions on this because 
it's pretty insane. We don't really know how Pascal and Fiji are going to be stacked up against each other. We do know one thing. Um, the future is bright for NVIDIA, for AMD, for, for gamers actually. Forget the companies. Forget the companies. Just throw them in the dustbin for a second. Let's talk about us as gamers. The future is bright. I've discussed the technologies billions of times. You know what they are. They're 4K. They're 60 frames a second. Well, not even 60, to be totally blunt. Forget 60. We're looking at 100 FPS plus, really. Um, we all know technologies like virtual reality. We all know technologies like augmented reality. We all know about ridiculous high-resolution displays like 5K monitors, which are coming out with insane resolutions. We all know about GTA 5, for example, which takes almost 4 gigabytes of VRAM, depending on, obviously, MSAA and all of the other settings that you have. And that's now. The reason I point this out is because this is 2015, folks. 2017? Hmm. What's that going to have? And you, this is one of the reasons that I was extremely excited about DirectX 12. We're getting to the GPU performance where we really can show it off. It's that simple. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.